We're continuing our studies of enzyme kinetics and inhibition, and in this lesson we want to look at the kinetic constants Km and Vmax. So recall if we plot initial velocity versus substrate concentration, we get a hyperbolic plot, and that illustrates that the enzyme obeys michaelis menten kinetics. So here's our michaelis menten equation. Here's our simple reaction scheme here that we saw before. So we know if we plot initial velocity versus substrate concentration, it reaches some saturating value, and we saw that represents the maximum velocity. So we can estimate Vmax simply from our curve. Now recall our Vmax is equal to K2 times the total concentration of enzyme. And so we can rearrange that equation a little bit. Here we have K2, we call that our catalytic rate constant. If you notice up here at our reaction scheme, K2 is the rate constant associated with the catalytic step, so it makes sense to call that the catalytic rate constant. So again, our expression here, K2 equals Vmax divided by the total concentration of enzyme. This is the turnover number of the enzyme. Let's look at that a little bit more. Recall that at Vmax, the enzyme is fully saturated with substrate, so we're at the maximal rate of product formation. So again, here's our expression for kcat. This is our turnover number. In other words, it's the number of substrate molecules that can get, that get converted to product per enzyme per unit time. Remember our first video lesson? We saw that the reaction velocity is dependent on the amount of enzyme. And so we want to normalize our expression and say not just what is the velocity, but what's the velocity per enzyme? In other words, how fast is each molecule working? So here's a table of some catalytic constants from your book, and here's our rather impressive enzyme carbonic anhydrase with a, a kcat of 1 million. In other words, in one second, it can convert 1 million substrate molecules to product. That is to say, every enzyme is working that fast. That's the maximal velocity. So we see that whether we're referring to kcat or vmax, they are directly related to one another. So the higher the value of the vmax, the higher the value of kcat. Let's look at some of the, some uh, comparative turnover numbers. Here's carbonic anhydrase at the top of our list, pretty impressive at a million. Look at the bottom of the list here, lysozyme, 0.5. In other words, in the time it takes lysozyme to carry out its reaction once, carbonic anhydrase has done it two million times. That's quite a difference. And as you can see from the list here, there's quite a lot of variability in terms of that turnover number. Well, we saw from our graph how we could estimate Vmax. What about Km? So again, at the top is our simple reaction scheme, and I'll just remind you that Km is a collection of rate constants. It's the ratio of the rate at which the enzyme substrate complex resolves compared to the rate at which it forms. So remember, if K1 is large, it rapidly binds substrate, then Km gets small. So you can think of it this way, the enzyme reaches maximum efficiency even at low substrate concentration. So if we rearrange our term here at the bottom of the screen, we have uh, a sum of two expressions. The first represents the dissociation constant, simple ratio of the rate at which it dissociates versus the rate at which it associates. And so the point here is just to say that there's more to this expression than just a dissociation constant. We'll refer to Km as a measure of substrate affinity, and indeed it is, but there is more involved than that. You'll notice, too, that Km is a capital K. It's a constant, but it is an equilibrium constant. Remember, it's a ratio of the tendency to resolve versus form, and that represents an equilibrium. So now we want to see how we can estimate Km from our graph. So here's our hyperbolic plot. Again, this is our michaelis menten equation at the top here. We want to consider the special circumstance when the substrate concentration is equal to Km. So I've substituted that in at the bottom left of the screen here. Here's our michaelis menten equation, and we're substituting the concentration of S for Km because in this case they're equal.
When we do that, our expression simplifies to one-half V max. In other words, when substrate concentration equals Km, our velocity is half maximal. That gives us more of a conceptual, practical definition for Km. Km is the concentration of substrate where the velocity is half maximal. So the units for Km are going to be the same as the units for substrate. So in order to estimate that from our graph, we're going to take our maximum velocity, we find one half of its value, and then we locate that point on our curve and the corresponding value of substrate concentration, that's our Km. But again, this is only an estimation, and so in our next lesson we want to see how we can get a more accurate measure. So again, the Km is a measure of substrate affinity. The faster the velocity of the, re the reaction, that is the higher the Vmax, the sooner that one-half Vmax is reached, and that means the smaller the value of Km. If the enzyme has high substrate affinity, it will bind its target even at low concentrations. So high substrate affinity, low Km. It's a measure of the concentration of, sub of substrate that is required in order for significant catalysis to occur. In other words, if the substrate concentration drops below Km, you're not going to get much product over time. It's often a pretty good approximation of the concentration of that substrate in vivo inside the cell. So let's compare our enzymes again. So here's carbonic anhydrase at the top of our list. Its Km for its substrate is 8,000 micromolar. Compare that to lysozyme, its Km is 6 micromolar. Remember, the smaller this value, the higher the affinity. So in other words, lysozyme binds its substrate with 1,000 times the affinity of carbonic anhydrase. So the question is, what's the best measure for catalytic efficiency? Is it Km or Vmax or some combination of the two? Is there a limit to that efficiency? And we want to find a more accurate way to measure Km and Vmax rather than just estimating them. So we'll consider these things in our next lesson.